Grandpa. Dr. Elizabeth Yuwon being a displaced person within her own country due to the crisis in the Anglophone regions and someone who found it hard in the beginning to settle in another place is not only rewriting her story but also making sure that she takes care of others. A trait that she cultivated some few decades ago. I started my orphanage 1999 in the village called Ma. In my village, there's a lot of poverty. That people deliver children and throw them and go their way. Maybe they can leave them in the house and go. They don't know whether they are eating. And when you are going around, you see children suffering. Sometimes you see some, they are eaten by jiga. So I make up my mind that if I see a child that does not have a parent, I will take care of it because I like little children. I like to watch children, take care of them. I like to see children that are not looking good and in a few days I see them smiling. There are some children that grow and they will never smile and this is not their nature. It is because of the nature of the way that they grew. When I started this in my village, I started from some two children that the mother was mad and the father died, the mother died and they were staying in the house alone and they were suspecting that this family had wish and nobody can take those children because when they take they will contaminate wish in any family when i was coming back from church i met them and i took them i brought them into my place and i take care of them i saw the joy under the way they took care of my children i discovered that the child that does not have anybody when you bring that child to correction that child will be humble that's where i developed the law Throughout her years as a philanthropist, she has taken care of over 100 children with diverse talent. I opened a community school at the plot that they first gave me and I was bringing them there, washing them, trying them to go back again. One day, I just decided to be staying with them. There are some children that I would take them and they stay with me and the parents would never come to ask. Even till today, there are some children that nobody has ever asked them, but they have grown and they have developed and they are doing things. So from there, I came up with 117 children in my village, which you can see the picture. All of them were happy. I was feeding them three times. I was not doing anything apart from get up in the morning. I wash them, I dress them, put them in class. I employ four teachers who were taking care of them, and I was paying them. I would go to the farm, work, bring food, and cook in the afternoon. That one gives me joy. I started worshiping with them. And I discovered talented children that will give song and you will hear like the voice is coming from heaven. It opened my heart. Through her sweat and hard work, Mama Elizabeth was able to set up a working structure that provided shelter for these children. I was doing that for some time. The salary of the teachers become a problem. And some of the two teachers run away because I was paying them in the village 30000 to teach for a month because they were not teaching the whole day. I struggle and I maintain too, which they teach them until 2002. From there, when I was going to school, I employed somebody who was taking care of them, sending them to various nearby schools. When I came back from my study from Mason School, I had to gather them together and we came to Ndop. When I came to Ndop, I still have that notion of increasing the children. I developed agriculture in the which I opened a farm tomato in the 25 hectares at Palmati area and I called the young boys from about 70 they came and we opened this tomato farm they worked the first year of tomato we had 12 million that is what has opened credit houses in Gokitunja. From there now I started getting small money from that credit house to sustain the life of the orphanage. That one was continuing, and I left, I went back to Kumbo again because of the structure I was putting for the orphanage. There I had 53 rooms house, which the orphans were sleeping free in their room, having their television, and I took part for the clinic, 
which if anybody come, he will sleep in his room, and I will give him food inside his room. He will be there for two days and rest and go. But all of her efforts went crashing as all she had built was destroyed as the Anglophone crisis kicked in. When this crisis came, there was no way. The crisis did not even obey anybody. It doesn't obey the phone of the village. It doesn't obey even the, the, the administration. So I was not exception. I had to leave the place and everything was destroyed. As I'm standing today, the, 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 the 53 room house we are content with bed, fridges, computers and everything. Everything has gone. I came to Douala. When I reached Douala, I was having 2,000 francs in my pocket. That could not even rent a house, it could not buy me food. I slept. The next day there was somebody dying in, in the company called Gas Total. The man I came and begged her floor and sleep there. Talk about me. They took me to, to, to Gas Total and I treated that man and he gave me 50,000. It is from that 50,000 that my life sustained till today. No matter the fact that she is an internally displaced person now, she still has those who are in need in her community in her heart. I cannot forget the past. I'm still having the community in my heart. Because right now, some children that are staying in the bush, there are still some children that are growing and they have in mind that that is good thing because they don't know the effect of it. I want that if they can be a peace in that my community, I will settle in Douala and I will extend it there because not all the children are here with me in Douala. In Douala, after 117 children, I have 45 here that all of them are going to school, some are in the university, and some are doing trade like mechanic, like wardering, like carpentry. All these children, if they are graduating, as I'm seeing the future, I can send them back home now to go and renovate the center to open big industry there that they should take the one that are strong enough that can do something and be training them there. That would be multiply effect. I cannot say that I will leave behind because many children are behind that I cannot condemn, contain them here in town. Because the life in town is very expensive, then you can easily manage. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to church. We are having our small car that is carrying 25 people. We don't have for the car. This small car is carrying 25 people to church. Thank you, Jesus, for the small one. We expect someone who can give us a big car. Dr. Elizabeth Yuwun is a mother of eight biological children and over 100 children adopted as orphans, and she is still looking forward to helping more children in need.